Each day that God gives us is a gift. I want to emphasize that. Each day that God gives us is a gift. David said, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. You know, I don't want to waste a day in self-pity and anger and sitting around feeling sorry for myself. And I don't know, but maybe when David said, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad. Maybe he wasn't having such a good day and he wasn't feeling like being jolly, but he was making a decision. I'm not going to waste this day. I will rejoice and be glad. So maybe right now, maybe this is a day for you where you have a problem. Something has happened that you certainly didn't want to happen. One of your kids has done something that now you're going to have to deal with or you've had another kind of challenge, a test, a tribulation, and you have a choice to either let it make you miserable or to seize the day and say, no, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Now, come on, just think about it. How many days have you lost and wasted in self-pity, in anger, in reasoning, trying to figure out some situation in your life that you're never going to figure out because only God knows the answer? We don't want to keep wasting our days. Each day is valuable, and we need to make each one of them count. F.B. Meyer said, perhaps you live too much in your feelings and too little in your will. I love that. One of my grandsons, when he was had just gotten out of high school, decided that he wanted to leave, leave home right away. And he wanted to go live with a bunch of guys in an apartment. And they all drank too much. And they got on drugs. And one of the boys even ended up dying from an overdose. And they just were living stupid lives. They were wasting their life. They were wasting every day that God gave them. And so my grandson finally decided, and partially it was because when this boy died from this overdose, it put some fear into him, and he decided he wanted to go home and get his life straightened out. So he called his parents and said, can I come home? And of course, they said yes. And, you know, he did diligently work to get off the alcohol, get off the drugs. He got right with God, started going to church, and now he's working in ministry, and things have turned around for him. And, you know, I want you to understand today that if you've made bad choices in the past, you can correct those bad choices by making right choices now. Every right choice you make helps undo a bad choice that you made in the past. All things are possible with God. Now, it may take time if you've gotten your life in a mess. It may take time to get it straightened out. But you can either keep putting time into making your life more and more miserable, or you can put time into making it better. Thankfully, he chose the right path, and now things are much better for him. You ever think about eternity? You know, eternity is something that begins when we leave this earth. At least we think of it that way. And eternity is like forever, never ending. Where do you want to spend eternity? The Bible tells us that there's only two options. We can spend eternity in heaven with God where there's no tears and no crying, no sickness, no disease, no hatred. I can't wait to get in that atmosphere where everybody loves each other, especially the way the world is today. Or if we make wrong choices, there is a place called hell. Now, a lot of people are not comfortable with talking about hell, but Jesus talked about it, and we need to talk about it. Where do you want to spend eternity? And, you know, I believe, and I wrote this, I think it's safe to say 
that our life here should be used preparing for there. I like that. If I spend my life here serving God, doing his will, doing what he wants me to do, every day that I do that, I'm getting more and more prepared to spend eternity.